Hey guys, we have another Warhammer review for McFarlane Toys. Today we're taking a look at the Adeptus Sororitas Battle Sister. On the back we have a picture of the Wave 2 figures. And on the side we have an image of the figure. The figure is packaged in the standard box, easy to remove. If you want the stand, you're going to have to cut open the box to get it out. Wave 2 of McFarlane's Warhammer series gives us the Sisters of Battle, an all-female division of the Imperium of Man. The sisters are raised from birth to worship the Emperor and defend against corruption, heresy, and all alien lifeforms. Fanatical in their beliefs, not even the death of a fellow sister phases them, as giving your life to the Emperor is the most pure form of worship. Sisters of Battle are equipped with power armor and a bolt pistol, and may use faith-based powers in combat. Their faith to the Emperor is so strong that they are able to remove all fear from their mind, shrug off mortal wounds, and stop at nothing until their enemies are all defeated. This sister is painted in the colors of the Order of Our Martyred Lady. Let's check out the details. On the front we have a black and white helmet with large rivets dotted all over. We have orange eyes with the rest of the head heavily armored in a black plate. On the side we can see more of the smooth helmet along with other small details. On the chest we have a large golden skull sigil with the necklace of the symbol of the sisterhood. Underneath we have dark armor detailed with studs and lily flower symbols covering the breastplates. We have a large backpack powering the power armor the sister uses. The sculpting is detailed with a ton of bits and pieces of machinery along with the large white symbol of a lily flower. On the right shoulder we have a large plate of armor with a white lily flower painted on. On the left shoulder plate we have large white wings. On the arms we have that bright red cloth sculpted to look as if being draped over the armor. The gauntlets are very dark with all that black paint hiding the smallest of the details in the sculpting. On the waist we have various leather pouches, grenades and other tools for the sister to use. On the back of the belt we have some more black straps along with the black sigil of the Inquisition. And on the lower side of the back we have more of that cloth like texture with buttons lined up on the side. On the front we have a large red tabard along with the golden sigil of the Order of Our Martyred Lady. The red tabard is textured to simulate fabric. The cloth extends all the way to the feet ending with the pattern at the bottom. The thighs have little detail with only small latches to secure the plate. We have large leg guards with the spiked skull painted white. And we finish up the figure with the boots. The sculpting here is very fine, making it hard to stand out in the dark paint. Let's take a look at the articulation. We have a ball jointed head, arms that open and bend forward and back, and shoulder armor that gets in the way of articulation. We have a double jointed elbow, a rotating forearm, wrists that rotate and bend back and forth, a ball joint at the chest, legs that move forward and back that are a bit hindered by the belt, we have slight thigh rotation, double jointed knees that bend backwards, ankles that rotate and bend up and down, and a very flexible toe. One unique thing to this figure is McFarlane's use of soft rubber. It gives a realistic look to the cloth but is also used on the armor of the figure. It gives a bit more range of articulation to the figure if the armor would ever get in the way. Although it was not used in the shoulder where it could have improved the articulation the most. We have a chain sword painted in a metallic grey, it is made of soft plastic. We have a metallic grey bolter gun with bronze bullets showing in the magazine, it's a nice detail. And we get a stand with the peg with the Warhammer logo on it. The Battle Sister figure is slightly shorter than the Ultramarine, while in the lore she stands a lot shorter. Her wide laid stance helps to make her look shorter but she's pretty much the same height in figure form. Here I will stand her next to a few other figures. This figure is an another amazing job by McFarlane. They packed a ton of detail into the sculpting and the paint is applied really well. The only improvement I would make on the figure are the tiniest details could be painted as well, like the studs and rivets and small chains. But for the very low price of these figures, it's a great value and really high quality. For the accessories, we get a bolter gun and a chain sword with the figure stand. I would have really enjoyed a helmetless alternate head for the sisters, but maybe we'll see that in the future. The rubbery parts on the figure really push the character quality up a lot. The cloth like texture and the soft armor parts give the character a better range of articulation and looks good while doing it. Overall a great figure, a must have for anyone who's army building the troops. McFarlane continues with his quality releases and every new figure so far has impressed me more than the last. 
I can't wait for figures from other chapters and more weapons and alternate heads. Even though a lot of parts are going to be reused, as long as they look unique and come with more accessories, they'll be a great addition to anyone's army. Alright guys, that's it for this review. More reviews are coming up soon, so check out my other videos while you wait.